and the decision of one man to launch a wholly unjustified and brutal invasion of Iraq, I mean of Ukraine. <laughs> I don't oppose war in all circumstances. What I do oppose is a dumb war. My fellow citizens, at this hour, American and coalition forces are in the early stages of military operations to disarm Iraq, to free its people, and to defend the world from grave danger. On my orders, coalition forces have begun striking selected targets of military importance to undermine Saddam Hussein's ability to wage war. How do we stabilize and, and make sure that this country doesn't splinter into factions between the Shias and, and the Kurds and uh, the Sunnis. Divide and conquer is a tactic used to weaken a population or territory by creating divisions and conflicts within it. This strategy has been used throughout history, including during the Iraq War, when the US military supported sectarian divisions between Sunni and Shia Muslims, leading to a protracted and bloody civil war. To understand how the divide and conquer method works, imagine a territory or population as a unified entity. By creating divisions and conflicts within that entity, an outside force can weaken its resistance and control it more effectively. This can be done by supporting one faction against another or by creating false divisions that don't actually exist. Interestingly, this method is not new. In fact, one of the most famous examples of divide and conquer in history was carried out by Julius Caesar during his conquest of Gaul. By exploiting internal divisions between Gallic tribes, Caesar was able to weaken and conquer them one by one, ultimately bringing all of Gaul under Roman control. Now let's take a step back in time to the origins of this notorious method and explore the story of Julius Caesar's conquest of Gaul. As we begin our journey through the conquest of Gaul, it is important to understand the political and military climate that existed in the region prior to Julius Caesar's arrival. The land of Gaul was a melting pot of various tribes and factions, each with their own customs and beliefs. The fierce tribal rivalries often led to bloody battles and constant power struggles. Caesar knew that he would face many challenges in his quest to conquer Gaul. The Roman Republic was plagued by internal turmoil and instability, and his enemies were not limited to the Gaulish tribes. There were powerful political factions in Rome that were fiercely opposed to Caesar and his ambitious goals. Despite these challenges, Caesar was determined to succeed. He knew that the conquest of Gaul would not only bring glory to Rome, but also cement his own position of power within the Republic. To achieve this, he would need to navigate the complex web of alliances and rivalries that existed among the various Gaulish tribes. The Gaulish tribes themselves were not to be underestimated. They were fierce warriors, renowned for their battle prowess and fierce independence. Among the key players in Gaul at the time were the Helvetii, a powerful tribe located in modern-day Switzerland, and the Edui, a tribe that was allied with Rome. As Caesar prepared to march into Gaul, he knew that he was embarking on a journey into the unknown. He was entering a land where his enemies were many and his allies few but he was also entering a land of opportunity where his skills as a military strategist and his mastery of the divide and conquer method would be put to the ultimate test. Caesar's reputation as a brilliant military leader preceded him and his arrival in Gaul sent shockwaves through the region. The Gaulish tribes knew that they were facing an adversary unlike any they had seen before, and they prepared accordingly. The tension in the air was palpable as Caesar and his army marched into Gaul. The tribes were wary of this new threat, and they quickly began to organize themselves for battle. Caesar knew that he could not afford to make any mistakes in this unfamiliar and hostile territory. He carefully studied the terrain and the strengths and weaknesses of his enemies, looking for any advantage he could find. But despite his meticulous planning, Caesar was still walking into a battle that was far from certain. He was outnumbered and outgunned. 
and the Gaulish tribes were determined to protect their lands and their way of life at all costs. As the two sides clashed, the sound of swords clashing and shields crashing echoed across the battlefield. The fighting was fierce and brutal, and it seemed like neither side was gaining the upper hand. But then Caesar unleashed his secret weapon, the divide and conquer method. He split his enemies into smaller groups and picked them off one by one, slowly but surely whittling down their numbers. As the battle raged on, it became clear that Caesar's mastery of this tactic was the key to his victory. He had outsmarted his enemies and emerged victorious in a battle that would go down in history as one of the greatest military triumphs of all time. But the conquest of Gaul was far from over. Caesar and his army would face many more challenges and obstacles as they continued their campaign, and the story of their journey would become a legend that would be told for centuries to come. Caesar knew that the Gaulish tribes would not be easily conquered, and that he would need to use all of his cunning and skill to defeat them. He assembled a force of over 50,000 men, including Roman legionaries, auxiliary troops and Gallic allies. But despite his impressive force, Caesar was not invincible. He faced several setbacks and defeats in his early campaigns, including a humiliating defeat at the hands of the Nervii, one of the most powerful and warlike tribes in Gaul. Despite this setback, Caesar remained undeterred. He continued to push forward, using his knowledge of the terrain and his mastery of strategy to outmaneuver and defeat his enemies. As the battle for Gaul raged on, the stakes grew higher and the fighting grew more intense. Caesar and his men faced fierce resistance from the Gaulish tribes who were determined to defend their lands and their way of life. But despite the odds against him, Caesar persevered. He continued to use his strategic genius and his unwavering determination to achieve victory after victory, slowly but surely bringing Gaul under Roman control. As the Gallic tribes united to rebel against their Roman oppressors, Caesar found himself facing his most challenging opponent yet. Vercingetorix, the leader of the rebellion, had rallied a massive army and fortified his stronghold at Elysia, a hilltop fortress surrounded by difficult terrain. Caesar knew that a direct assault on Elysia would be suicidal, so he devised a daring plan to encircle the fortress and starve the Gallic army into submission. He ordered his troops to build two massive walls around Elysia, one facing inward to prevent the Gallic army from escaping and one facing outward to keep reinforcements from entering. As the Romans worked tirelessly to build their walls, tensions rose within the fortress. The Gallic warriors were running low on food and supplies and Vercingetorix knew that time was running out. He ordered his troops to launch a desperate attack on the Roman lines, hoping to break through and escape. The battle that ensued was brutal and chaotic. The Gallic warriors charged the Roman walls with all their might, but the disciplined Roman soldiers held their ground. The fighting lasted for hours, with neither side gaining the upper hand. As the sun began to set, the Gallic warriors made one last desperate push, hoping to break through the Roman lines and escape into the night. But Caesar was ready for this. He had stationed his cavalry and archers at key points along the wall, and they rained down arrows and spears on the charging Gauls. The Gallic assault was repelled and their spirits were broken. They knew that they were trapped, with no hope of escape. Vercingetorix called a council of his top commanders to discuss their options, but they could find no way out. In a bold move, Vercingetorix decided to surrender himself to Caesar, hoping that his sacrifice would spare his people from further suffering. He rode out of Alesia and presented himself to the Roman general, who accepted his surrender. The Gallic warriors were stunned by this turn of events. They had been fighting for months, risking their lives for their cause, and now their leader had surrendered without a fight. But they had no choice but to accept their fate. 
Caesar had achieved a decisive victory at Elysia, but it had come at a high cost. His troops had suffered heavy casualties, and he knew that the Gallic tribes would not give up their fight for independence so easily. As he reflected on the battle, Caesar realized that his victory had been due, in large part, to his strategy of divide and conquer. By isolating the Gallic army and cutting off their supply lines, he had weakened them and made them vulnerable to attack. It was a tactic that he would use again and again in his campaigns, and it would become one of his most famous military innovations. But as Caesar looked out at the captured Gallic warriors, he also knew that there were ethical implications to his actions. He had defeated an entire people, and he had done it by pitting them against each other. He wondered what kind of world he was creating and what kind of legacy he would leave behind. As the sun set over Elysia, Caesar knew that he had won the battle, but the war was far from over. As the conquest of Gaul came to an end, the political landscape of ancient Rome was forever changed. Caesar's triumph in Gaul solidified his power and elevated him to the status of a hero in the eyes of the Roman people. However, his victory had come at a great cost to Gaul and its people. The Gallic tribes had been decimated by years of warfare, with estimates suggesting that up to a million people lost their lives in the conflict. Entire cities and villages had been razed to the ground, and the survivors were left to pick up the pieces of their shattered lives. The conquest of Gaul also had far-reaching implications for the future of Rome. With Gaul firmly under Roman control, Caesar had secured a vast territory and immense wealth for the Republic. However, his growing power and ambition would ultimately lead to his downfall, as his enemies in the Roman Senate began to view him as a threat to the stability of the Republic. The Gallic people were forced to adopt Roman culture and traditions, and their own unique identities were slowly eroded over time. However, the legacy of the Gallic resistance to Roman rule would endure, inspiring future generations to fight for their freedom and independence. As the dust settled on Caesar's conquest of Gaul, the world around him began to change. The once great Gallic tribes had been reduced to mere shadows of their former selves. But while Caesar may have secured his place in history as a conqueror and hero, his actions in Gaul would have far-reaching consequences that he could never have anticipated. As Caesar returned to Rome, his conquest of Gaul had earned him the adoration of the people and the envy of his enemies. But his growing power and ambition would ultimately lead to his downfall as the Roman Senate began to view him as a threat to the stability of the Republic. In the midst of this political turmoil, Caesar found himself drawn into a web of intrigue and betrayal that would ultimately lead to his assassination. But even in death, Caesar's legacy would endure, shaping the course of history for centuries to come. As the Roman Empire continued to expand, the legacy of Caesar's conquest of Gaul would be felt far beyond the borders of the ancient world. The military tactics and strategies developed by Caesar in his campaigns would be studied and emulated by generals and commanders for generations to come. The conquest of Gaul may seem like a distant chapter in ancient history, but its lessons continue to resonate in our modern world. From military conflicts to political campaigns, the divide and conquer method has been used time and time again to achieve strategic objectives. But with great power comes great responsibility, and the ethical implications of using such tactics cannot be ignored. As we reflect on the conquest of Gaul, we must consider the human cost of war and the long-lasting effects of conquest on the conquered people. In conclusion, the conquest of Gaul serves as a reminder of the importance of strategic planning and adaptability in achieving military and political objectives. But it also serves as a cautionary tale of the unintended consequences of conquest and the ethical dilemmas that arise when power is wielded without empathy and restraint. Thank you for watching, and we hope this video has sparked your interest in the fascinating history of ancient Rome. 
For further reading, we recommend checking out the works of Julius Caesar himself, as well as modern historians who have studied the conquest of Gaul in depth.